First, I'd like to thank everyone. By the time this video is released, we will have made it to the 1,000 subscriber threshold, or at least very soon after. So thanks to everyone for watching and subscribing. Now on to the tour. This is our barn, and we put a lot of work into this barn in the past few years, including converting half of the bottom floor into a workshop. So today we're going to take a little tour around the shop, and we can even take a look at some of the other major upgrades we've done to the barn this year. My shop started as a horse barn, with stalls and a dirt floor. So I ripped out the stalls and added concrete wherever there was dirt. We rented a small excavator to help with the work, and though it was a tight fit to get in the barn, we managed. And we were able to get enough dirt out to make room for some gravel, and then vapor barrier. The concrete arrived, and in no time we had a nice new concrete floor. Now that we have concrete in the entire barn, it's time to build a wall that cuts the bottom floor in half. As well as putting up a new wall, all the old walls were stripped down and cleared out to make room for insulation. And then everything was covered in paneling. It was a lot of work to get to this point, but now I have an insulated space to work in. The first major job I tackled was the French cleat wall. This is the main workspace here in the shop. Everything kind of centers around the bench and the cleat wall. When working on something, almost anything I need is right here, close at hand. Since adding the cleat wall, I've been very busy making up new and interesting ways to hang tools on the wall. I have quite a few videos that cover almost all the tool holders used on the wall. I'll add links to the relevant videos in the description below, and you can spend the next several hours binge watching all of the videos on how the shop was put together. But for now, let's continue with the tour. If you're enjoying the tour, feel free to subscribe. With the French cleat wall done, the next thing needed was this workbench. I used to have another one, but it was not a good fit for the spot, and it had some design issues. And don't worry, I've reprimanded the designer. This new bench is mobile, so I can move it out of the way to clean up, or if I really need a little more space for something else. The bench is pretty basic, but it's really been working out well so far. So that took care of the two major pieces in the shop. A place to put the tools for easy access, and a place to do most of the work. So next I needed to deal with lumber storage. At that time, it was all over the place, and it was difficult to find anything, or access it when I could find it. So I built the mobile lumber cart. This thing holds a lot of lumber, and it can be moved around when needed, but most of the time it sits here in this corner. All of the small and medium sized stuff is facing out for easy access, and if I need large sheet goods, I can just roll it out and get what I need. And it's really easy to find what I'm looking for. Now that lumber storage was no longer a problem, I decided to make a crosscut sled for the table saw. Right now the table saw sits in the middle of the shop, and I use this mobile cart as an outfeed table. The cart is also holding the planer, and if I need to cut larger sheets with the table saw, then I have to move the planer somewhere else for a bit. This is not going to work long term, so I'm also going to make a table saw stand, something large and flat with plenty of room for outfeed. After I made the crosscut sled, one of my favorite new tools arrived, the snap maker. This is a 3-in-1 machine that has a laser etcher, a 3D printer, and a CNC machine all rolled into one. And I have been having a lot of fun using this to create new and interesting things. This machine is noisy, and it can be pretty messy. So a lot of people have them in enclosures. Snapmaker sells one, but I wanted to make one myself. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's vented to the outside to get rid of any noxious odors created by the laser etcher as well as any airborne dust from the CNC machine. The enclosure also opens up really wide to allow access to the machine for cleaning, maintenance, or changing tool heads. For now, all this is sitting on an old desk that my aunt gave me, but I plan to make a large workstation here for it with plenty of drawers to store all the things that are used along with this machine, as well as a little spot to sit and work on the laptop. Something that I've always wanted in my shop is a bandsaw, and I was very happy when we were able to pick up this new Rikon for now it's sitting out in the middle of the shop, kind of in the way, but I have plans for a future home for this saw. It's just going to take some time to deal with all the other stuff that's already in the way. This is one area that still needs a lot of work. Everything on these shelves will need a place to be stored, so that I can use this area for the bandsaw, and possibly a couple other things. I was able to clear a lot of the clutter out when I built the cabinets. These cabinets were added recently, and they've made a huge difference in the cleanliness of the shop. They hold a ton of stuff and all of that stuff is not getting covered in dust. I'm gonna add some more cabinets and drawers someday soon, and I think it will be over here where the miter saw is. 
Eventually, I want to build a large miter saw station with loads of space for storage, as well as some dust collection for the miter saw. But again, that one's going to have to wait for wood prices to drop a bit first. Beside the new cabinets, I'm using an old dresser as a stand for the new benchtop sander, as well as the drill press. And the scroll saw is stored next to it. The scroll saw doesn't see much use since I got the snap maker. The future plan is to make a new stand here for these tools, or maybe a stand for each. It depends on what works best at the time. I want to replace the drill press because it's just not powerful enough for what I need it to do. And if I end up with a stand-up model, then I won't need a stand for it. The sander will still need a stand though, and all the things that are stored in these drawers will need a home as well. When the time comes, I'll design it to suit my needs. For dust collection in my shop, I use a shop vac on a cart that I built that has a long hose and wheels so I can move it around to wherever it's needed. It works great for now, but I plan to eventually set up some proper dust collection. The barn has a pump house on the side and there'll be room in there for a dust collector. Then I can just run ducks where I need them. This pump house is in need of some major repairs first though, so that'll be a project for a future video. Dust collection is a big part of a shop, but so is air filtration. So with that in mind, I bought an air filter for the shop a few weeks ago. For now, it's sitting above that big open shelf that needs to go. And it seems to be working great there so far. I have noticed a real difference in the dust level in the shop since adding the filter. The last stop on the shop tour is the area beside the door. It's a bit of a blank canvas right now. And my current plan is to add French cleats to this portion of the wall and have a bench with storage below. The bench top can possibly be used for the sander or another bench top machine that I get in the future. Other future plans include a drum sander and a jointer and upgrading the table saw from a job site saw to a cabinet saw. But all of those are going to have to wait a bit since they're some pretty pricey items. That covers the interior of the shop. But the barn has had a few other major changes this year. The biggest change so far is probably the stairs to the loft. We used to use these, well, sort of stairs that were located in the shop space. It was difficult to move anything up or down from the loft on these stairs because you needed to use your hands to hold on. And they were taking up valuable real estate in the shop. So these proper stairs were added and they've been a great addition. The ability to walk up and down the stairs with a handful of stuff makes moving things up and down so much easier. As a little side bonus, making the stairs has created a nice little place to store the garbage and recycling bins. The front room of the barn was converted into a pantry added a large shelf for storage, and rearranged the fridge and freezer to make room. We also added a small kiln for my wife's pottery. Of course, with a kiln, there must be a wheel, and for that, I added another insulated space for a small pottery studio. This is working out really well so far, and a major project upcoming for the pottery studio is to add some lower cabinets, similar to what I added in the shop. But that's another project, waiting for lumber prices to drop. This small area out front the pottery studio is being used for the John Deere trailer and some other various items like hoses, sporting gear, and some of my wife's creations. Long term for this spot, I want to add some more storage and shelving, but that's way down the list for now. The last part of the ground floor is the gardening room. This is another large project waiting to happen. We use it to park the John Deere and the push mower, as well as other garden supplies and bee equipment. Eventually, I want to create storage solutions in here to organize all this stuff. Possibly another French cleat wall and add some cabinets and shelves. There's no current plan to insulate this part of the barn, so anything built in here has to be a little more resistant to the elements. Though it is an enclosed space, it gets pretty damp in here sometimes, and also quite cold. So anything built in here has to take that into consideration. The loft is pretty much the same as it's always been. There's great potential up there as well, but for now it's just become a dumping ground for things that don't fit downstairs. In the not too distant future, I plan to sort out the loft and add some unique storage solutions up there. So what do I use my shop for? Pretty much all the videos on our channel revolve around the shop in some way. It's been a ton of work to get to this point, but I'm so happy with what we've accomplished so far. Click here to see some of my favorite shop videos.